Australian folk tales. The Hedgehog. Once upon a time, there lived a merchant, a king, and a poor man. The merchant often went hunting in the forest, and one day he became so very lost that he wandered around for three whole days, unable to find his way home. He said, oh, if only someone would show me the way out, I'd give him the hand of the most beautiful of my three daughters in marriage and three sacks of gold. I'll show you the way out if you follow me. The merchant looked down at his feet and saw a snuffling hedgehog. Then the merchant was forced to promise the hedgehog his most beautiful daughter's hand and three sacks of gold if he would lead him out of the forest. Then the hedgehog set out, followed by the merchant, and they reached the edge of the forest in no time. The following day, the king also went hunting in the forest, and he also got lost, much like the merchant the day before. The king said, if only someone would show me the way out, I'd give him the hand of the most beautiful of my three daughters in marriage, along with three carts of gold. I'll show you the way out if you follow me. The king looked around to see where the voice was coming from and then saw the hedgehog by his feet. He was so anxious to get out of the forest that he couldn't care less who it was, so he followed the hedgehog and they soon reached the edge of the forest. The following day, the poor man also got lost in the forest. Oh dear, I have nothing to my name, but even if an ugly beast showed me the way out of this forest, I would willingly adopt it as my own dear child. I'll show you the way out if you follow me, a voice said. The voice, of course, came from the hedgehog, and it led the poor man to the edge of the forest in no time at all. Time passed, and the merchant, the king, and the poor man had almost forgotten about the little hedgehog. One night, after the poor man had gone to bed, someone knocked on his window. Father dear, please open the door for me. Who can that be, the poor man wondered, because he knew he had no children. Hello, father. I finally come home, the hedgehog said. Welcome, son. I'm happy you're here, said the poor man. I am too. And would you please wait my dear mother to make my bed for me? Father dear, do you have two pennies? The hedgehog asked. Yes, I do, my son, said the poor man. Well then, please go into town and in the marketplace you'll find a very old lady selling a black cockerel. Buy it for me, said the hedgehog. Then go to the saddler, who has a worn out saddle, and buy that for me too. So the poor man went into town, bought the black cockerel and the worn out saddle, and took them home where the hedgehog saddled the cockerel, climbed up onto its back, and rode away as fast as the wind. The hedgehog didn't stop until it reached the home of the merchant, where it said, Merchant, sir, open the door and let me in. The merchant nearly fell over backwards when he saw the hedgehog, but he had to let it in. Then he called his three daughters and told them of the promise he had made to the prickly creature. The merchant's daughters cried and cried, but the hedgehog paid no attention and chose the most beautiful girl and tried to comfort her with the following words. You are mine and I am yours, till death do us part. But the pretty girl refused to repeat his words and cried so much that she threw herself down on the ground. But protest as she might, the girl was forced to leave home with the hedgehog. Then the merchant harnessed the horses, put three sacks of money into another cart, and off they went with the hedgehog proudly riding its black cockerel alongside. Are you still crying? I am, and I will cry until my dying day. In that case, said the hedgehog, Go back to your father. But the hedgehog kept the three sacks of gold and took them home to the poor man. 
Time passed until the day eventually came when the hedgehog saddled its black cockerel and rode off to visit the king of the land. The hedgehog told the king why it had come, hoping the king remembered his promise. I only wish I had forgotten, but I haven't, and I always keep my word, said the king. He called his three daughters and sadly told them what had happened to him in the forest, and now this prickly creature had come here to pick his most beautiful daughter for his wife. It may think I'm the most beautiful, but I refuse to be a hedgehog's wife. I'd rather die than be a hedgehog's wife. I'll be only too happy to be its wife because it was so kind to my dear father. The king was happy and sad at the same time. He was glad one of his daughters had turned out to be so kind-hearted, but was sad to lose his only kind-hearted daughter. The king loaded silver, gold and diamonds onto three carts, harnessed horses to the royal coach and the princess climbed in. The hedgehog, however, did not go in the coach, but rode alongside on the black cockerel. They had been riding for many hours and were far away from the palace when the hedgehog looked into the coach and was surprised to see the princess happy and not crying. She said, why do you insist on riding that black cockerel instead of sitting beside me here in the coach? Aren't you afraid of me? the hedgehog asked. Why should I, when I know you will do me no harm? she replied. Don't you find me ugly? asked the hedgehog. Of course not, the princess replied. Then a miracle happened. The hedgehog shook itself and immediately turned into a tall and handsome prince who beamed brighter than the sun. Then the cockerel shook itself and turned into a fabulous stallion. And a palace appeared with walls and windows made of sparkling diamonds. Then they sent for the king, they sent for the poor man, and they sent for everyone in the land to join them at their wonderful wedding feast. And they all lived happily ever after.